welcome again to my channel. I hope every everyone is okay. Okay, we, we're going to continue with uh, our talks that we were um, having regarding um, tactical presentation. And as I said before, this is just to explain because there isn't a lot of explanation as far as um, practical material and tactical presentation. And in many cases, as I said before, um, the, the material that we, there is in many courses and books and videos is not very accurate to what really tactical position is. This is the reason why I decided to create these videos on YouTube on my channel uh, to you know to sh give some light on on how uh, we normally <coughs> go about um, operating in this methodology. Okay, so uh, we're going to continue with fractal. So fractal is. As we said before, fracturing are representing a chaotic model and sub-models existing in various scales. Which are representative of this model? Uh, a fractal is an invariant or regular part of a chaotic system, which, by its structure and functionality, uh, can represent the whole independently from the scale where it can be found. Okay. And as I said before, um, most of the material is gathered um, from um, material... Uh, from Professor Frade, especially uh, in, in personal interviews, books, you know, different material that you that there is, in, especially in Portuguese, and also by Professor Jose Guillermo Oliveira. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go into the second part, which is another way of of fracting, um, uh, which is a way how we're going to organize the sessions and the week according to uh, the material. So this is all. Uh, different ways of organizing the material and uh, so that people begin to understand it because I see that uh, most people do not understand how we do this in tactical position so you begin to see that it's not so uh, uh, it's not so difficult it's not so complicated it is uh, a methodology where you have to understand the steps that we go through but it's not really so complicated I mean anyone can do it especially in in, in a certain uh, way of uh, not being the, the model so sophisticated and complicated. Okay, so I'm going to uh, quote a, a famous uh, coach, Jose Mourinho, who, who was probably one of the first coaches who started uh, using tactical presentation several decades ago and um, became really famous with Rifaria uh, in, um, in applying tactical presentation now that is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular methodology used in in, in contemporary football or soccer. For example, in the Premier League, the majority of the teams are using tactical position. Coaches like uh, Brendan Rodgers or, for example, in Liverpool, the coaching staff that Julian Klopp has uh, are all from uh, University of Porto or, or Football Club Porto coaches. Well, most teams, either they have in... Uh, uh, either they, they use it or they have a coaching staff who, who, uh, who apply it. So <clears throat> we're going to um, uh, talk about, con continue explaining how this, we use it, and uh, um, hopefully people will begin to develop curiosity, and they will go, as I said before, to the real sources and, and really try to learn from them what is it about. Okay, so uh, the phrase that Mourinho um, mentions is very uh, similar to the idea that I talked about when I started doing these videos, which is a, a coach nowadays says that he wants to train like Mourinho, Guardiola, or Simeone, can go to YouTube and he'll be able to pull something out. Another thing is being able to produce your own knowledge and no one better than us to have an idea and be able to operate. The ability to operate an idea is what makes a rich training. The fact that there is so much knowledge available makes that often. There is a tendency to not filter and to not prioritize what is most important and fundamental. So, in other words, um, in, in, because there is a lot of, um, um, now we, we are able to see whatever coach or whatever trainer that maybe we like or we admire how, what he does. And there are a lot many colleagues who uh, are practically showing 24-7 different videos of how they train, which is fine. You know, it's great, you know. But uh, we should not uh, just copy because, the, as I said before, the, the realities that, and the model that someone, a professional club has, is not going to be most of, it's not going to be the reality of another coach. 
So we're all going to be different. So uh, because of the characteristics of the players, of course, and their level and what and their age and you know all these factors that come into when we create a model. So you know we can yes adapt or we can even copy an exercise maybe, and especially the generic exercises. But when as far as building the session during the week we should be able to develop them according to our needs as a team that we're building, okay? So, uh, fractals are uh, related specifically to the principle of horizontal alternation and specificity, okay? So, they're going to be directly linked to the principle of horizontal alternation and specificity, in other words, the morphocycle, Okay, and in other words, the subdynamic of the session and its complexity. So we're going to fract or we're going to organize the session according to its complexity, its duration, okay, or the volume of the exercise, okay, the number of players, okay, all these factors and the complexity, the information that we're going to give. So all these factors are going to play into how we're going to create the exercise or we're going to build the exercise, okay? So according to the session, if, for example, if we're working on the acquisition sessions, like for example, if we're working on the tension of the muscle contraction, we know that we cannot, uh, we can do it in an exercise maybe where we can work uh, on collective scales, but we know that in that session, we're going to have a low complexity because the intensity is going to be very high. So we know that most of the times either we're going to work either individually or by groups or sectorally or at the most intersectorally, maybe at the end of the session. But most of the times, the, the, um, the scales, they have to be rather working with not a high amount of players, okay? So in those days, we're going to work smaller space, we're going to work a lower complexity, we're going to work high intensity, okay? And low complexity so that the intensity will remain high, okay? And the same thing goes, for example, in a session where we're going to work the duration of the muscle contraction, when you, when gonna, where we're going to work macro principles. So here we're going to work in a, on scales of, of collectively or intersectorially, and we're going to work high amount of players, higher complexity, bigger spaces, and macro principles. Okay, So this is how we're going to organize. I want people to understand that this is how we organize the week, the morphocycle, which is according to the principle of our alternation specificity and the subdynamic that the session is going to have. Okay. So, according to that subdynamic, which is um, what I'm, I'm explaining, okay, because why? Because this is the way how our team is going to be uh, physically fit or on, the, on the physical dimension. We're going to be working uh, correctly, okay? We will have the guarantee that our, our team will be fit physically. And also, of course, we don't talk about physical fitness in tech globalization, but it's always uh, football fitness, but... Of course, we want the team to be fresh. We want the team to have, um, have to, to, to be able to respond physically, okay? And the complex progression principle, okay? This is a methodological principle, like the, the, the horizontal alternation, and the other ones, the principle of propension, okay? Which are the, the in, in, in the sessions, we want the, the, information that we're trying to give in those exercises to be repeated over and over, okay? So uh, the, the uh, complex progression principle is none other than we're going to progress during the year, during the week, during the month, during the year, always into more complexity, okay? So before in the first part, we talked about scales, which is, you know, um, according to if it's individual, group, sectorally, intersectorial, and collective. And now we're going to add, we're going to add more complexity, and now we're going to focus, start focusing on the space, on the pitch, which is this part, okay? So now, uh, how are we going to do this? Very simple. We're going to divide, divide the pitch in three-thirds, okay? And we're going to start focusing on, okay, for example, we're going to work in a scale, whatever scale, but on the first third, or another scale in the second third, or another scales in the third, in the last third. And we can change from one third to the other, okay, also. So, so we're going to be focusing now on, for example, we're going to work 
sectorially in the last third, or uh, sectorially in the second third, or sectorially in the third and last third, okay, or intersectorial, the same thing, okay, in the first third, or passing to from the first to the second, or the, from the second to the third. So this is another way, a second way of how there. Are, remember, I said there were several ways. This is another way, which are going to be later videos, of fracting, organizing. Okay, so now we're going to add the space on the picture. So this is the second part. Okay, and I'm going to give some brief, simple examples of how we do this. Then we're going to go in the next videos into the, uh, the other ways. Okay, which th there are maybe one or two more or three more. Uh, how we do it. Okay, but this is just another way. Okay. Now, according to uh, the practical examples, okay, uh, for example, this will be an example of fractal, okay, changing one team, for example, and this exercise is very simple. Remember, you're trying to create the condition or the, or the, the, the situation so that Whatever you're trying to work, okay, uh, happens many times, but in real context of game or very close to real context of game. So in this case, for example, I'm working on the build-up phase on the red team from left to right with a yellow goalkeeper, and the green team is defending the three small goals from right to left. And what I'm working here is build-up phase from the in the first to the second third, okay, or the first and second third. And I'm working also transition, defensive transition on the red team. I placed the center forward in this case with a, with a structure of 1, 4, 3, 3 behind the line of the goal. So he will play support, okay, as uh, the red team has the ball. But they're going to be playing with one less player, okay. So I'm trying to um, make visible the defensive transition for the red team. So... Even if, if you want to make it in the beginning, maybe even more, you can place the three forwards behind the line and they will have three less players. OK, and basically when the red team loses the ball, OK, because it's going to be difficult for them to progress, they have to automatically change from offense organization or um, attack to defense to defense transition. And then later, if they're not, if they don't score, uh, the, the green team doesn't score uh, defense organization. So, and there we're going to work in, in not different micro principles or meso principles out of our game model. I'm just, this is just an example. And the green team is the opposite. So the green team will be working uh, defensive organization, okay? And immediately, once they gain the ball, they have to score the goal in less than five passes. So they're going to look for depth, quickness, okay? And take advantage of uh, defensive uh, disorganization of the red team. Okay, so what I did is just created a context, okay, where, see, here the green team gets the ball again, and very quickly they have to try to finish in very uh, few passes, and the red team has to reorganize again. Now, adding the principal propensities, we're going to go, and every time the ball goes out or there's a goal, whatever happens, always we start with the same situation, okay, build up from the red from the back, Okay, and the green team, the same thing. Okay, so we're always going to be creating context for your team, for the team that you're coaching, okay, and trying uh, for them to do what they're going to do in the match. If you're going to press differently, if you're going to play with different structure, of course, this is what I was mentioning before about the playing model. So this is why it's very important to create context for your team so they're always doing things that they're going to do in the matches, okay? The second example is an intersectorial in the second third, working just in inside a system or structure of one, one, four, two, three, one. And in this case, it's very simple. When they defend, they can only defend in their space. When they attack, especially the two players on the wings, they can create a three versus two in the last third. Okay, it's very simple. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so very quickly, you have to take advantage of a numerical superiority, find the two versus one, and later find the free man, okay? And score. Very simple, okay? We're working here in the second third, and we're working intersectorially, okay? So always we're going to be dividing uh, or, or, or dividing or organizing the work according to the subdynamic of the session, 
the, the session uh, according to what uh, dynamic it has, you're going to be creating the exercises or the task according to the subdynamic and according to the information. Remember that the information is going to, is going to influence how uh, the intensity and it's going to be influenced also by the amount of players and the space. Okay, so all this, all these factors are going to uh, play into a, uh, are going to play when you're going to organize a session. In this case, is more or less a, a group uh, task or exercise. Okay, uh, it could be also if you add uh, the jokers, it could be an intersectorial, or it can be a group because we have the two uh, defenders, the blue. In a structure of four, two, three, one, the two central defenders, the holding midfielder, and the two offensive midfielders, and the two greens will be the two backs, okay, and the two full backs, and uh, the red team, same thing, okay, the three from the the three forwards, and then the the two offensive midfielders, and the greens could be the two backs also incorporated in attack. So it's very simple. The green, the blue team has to. Um, uh, dribble through the, the the square, the space that were uh, uh, outside the box, in front of the box, and uh, in front of the area. And uh, once uh, they they dribble inside that space, the exercise starts. They have to find free man with the two uh, jokers on the outside. Okay, and immediately again, I'm working defensive transition here or offensive transition for the red. Immediately after they lose the ball they have to uh, reorganize very quickly, okay? And uh, again, same issue, we have, we're gonna work information and this is all will be on the first third, okay? <clears throat> so this will be um, taking into account the space on the pitch of first third. Once the, the situation uh, finishes, again, we start with the same situation, okay? Starting from the back, okay? And the other team has to finish very quickly and take advantage of this organization, okay? Then we go into a sectorial example, okay? Okay, and this one will be with the three forwards and the back four with the two jokers, okay? And we're going to be working here. And of course, the, the all the information uh, you're going to give the players gradually, okay? And also, of course, you can add complementary tasks or exercises to work on specific information that you want to work, for example, with your the back four, for example, the defensive line or the attackers or whatever, okay? And it's also the same thing, okay? Creating context for your player, for your team that, that you're going to have in the matches, okay? So we're always doing this, okay, constantly. And we're modifying it according to sub-dynamic of the week, in other words, okay, to make it uh, very simple for, for you to understand. Okay, and here we have a group exercise, okay? So if you look like if you were looking from up top, you would see that we have a, a green team, we have a, a, could be a back, a wing, an offensive midfielder, and the red could be an offensive midfielder, also a center midfielder, okay? And um, <clears throat> they have to dribble through uh, either um, from the outside. Here we would be working... The, the 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 two um the number two and number four lanes okay penetration okay so they have to dribble through like football rugby so they would have to dribble through the two goals okay with the cones okay one always uh, dribble through finishing through the two flags and the other team <clears throat> the blue team also same thing we have a, a center back a full back a right full back and a Midfielder with a joker that could be an offensive midfielder or a default holding midfield also. And uh, once they gain the ball, I have to take advantage of number of goals of and score the goals. So it's a very simple exercise, creating context. And uh, what we're always trying to do is this, you know, create context. And the way we're going to organize it according to the subdynamic of the session, according to the principle of horizontal alternation, and according to the complexity, okay, and the subdynamic of the session, okay? So it's always the same, you know? It's always all this information. As we go into the year and uh, they begin to, you see that the, the players are able to understand the game, they're able to execute and operate correctly, 
you can add always more complexity okay and uh, this is why of the reason for the video so first we started with okay the last one is a 1v1 with two jokers outside uh, the forward trying to gain be the back of the defender or in front okay and finish okay it's real very simple real context exercises okay and organizing the sessions the material in the sessions is this is how we do it so it will be according to the scales of the team according to the space okay and then in the next videos we're going to uh, be um, working with the faces or the moments and the sub faces okay and the last one will be for example the macro meso micro and nano principle so we're always going to be adding complexity as the year goes by and as the players begin to improve and understand the playing model and understanding the game because training this way they be, they're going to be understanding the game okay, you're going to be creating players that are able to execute and operate very quickly because they will begin to understand the game more easier because they're working in real situations and um, this is how we do it in tactical precision so i decided to to make these video videos so that um we because these all normally and, and many people talk about tactilization but they really don't understand it how it really is and um, they don't explain uh how we build the sessions how we organize the work so this is normally how it's done and um you know i hope you understood it i hope you uh, like it and uh, if you have any questions any doubts please let me know and uh Hope to see you again in the next video, okay? So take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.